I call the member for Braddon. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Well, if this budget is fair, then I must be on a different planet, and so must every other Australian in this country who does not believe a word that comes out of the mouths of those sitting opposite, because it is quite clear that this government do not listen to people in their own communities, those people that actually elected them to sit over there. They don't even listen to them. And if they can't even do that, they don't even take any notice of evidence, of research. You know, if they actually took a grassroots approach to their policy development by actually going and talking to the people that elected them, or actually take an academic approach if they can't do that, and actually look at the evidence provided by researchers, by independent people, and actually question whether they have the ability to do that, then they would not have arrived at this unfair budget. And you can see today in the Sydney Morning Herald, the headline today in this story, twice as many households worse off under Coalition's Medicare levy rise plan. But let's just look at this in a little bit of detail, if, you, if you're not convinced by that. So twice as many households will be worse off under the federal government's plan to raise the Medicare levy by half a percentage point than under Labor's alternative, according to new modelling by the ANU, that's the Australian National University, Centre for Social Research and Methods. OK, let's go a little bit further. And middle income earners will do much more of the heavy lifting under the coalition than under Labor. If the Liberal policy were in place from July 1, 2019, according to the ANU modelling, 60 per cent of households would be worse off. 60 per cent, I reckon 60 per cent of those households would be in a number of those seats sitting opposite. Maybe not the member for Wentworth, we can understand that, but many of them over there, particularly in regional rural seats, would have to look at this research and question whether they support this measure. 39 per cent would see no change and just 1 per cent would be better off. And I bet you that 1 per cent are probably sitting in the seat of Wentworth. Possibly. But you know, who are these people listening to? The people that elected them or the Prime Minister. It just begs, begs belief. So I look at this Medicare levy and we have to look at how I, I would imagine the government arrived at this measure. So they're saying, you know, we've got to give big business a tax cut. And you know, they don't even look at their own Treasury modelling, which suggests in about what, 20 years' time that it will deliver an economic growth of 0.1 per cent negligible growth, not even looking at their own modelling. But let's go back to the conversation the Treasurer probably had in his office with his, his advisers and so forth. So we want to give big business a $65 billion tax cut. How are we going to fund that? What are we going to do to make our, our budget some, some pla place in time return to surplus? Well, the Medicare levy was really popular when, when Labor introduced the NDIS, which Labor fully funded, mind you. So the, the people actually thought that was a pretty reasonable measure. So let's just say that the NDIS is not fully funded. Oh, we'll raise the Medicare levy to pay for that gap of giving big business a tax cut. So when you've got the party sitting over there saying, we're the party of lower tax, it's lower taxes for millionaires and big business, not for the rest of our community. Now let's look at another measure, the energy supplement. Now I don't know about those sitting opposite, but I've been listening to my community because I've been inundated with letters from people in my community about the government's plan in their budget to, re to remove the energy supplement. Now let's just say the carbon tax, yes, the carbon tax doesn't exist anymore, Never for but we know energy prices are rising. So Bill from Penguin says, stop whacking the poor and the pensioners. Have a go at the rich individuals and the yeah. large companies. Yeah. Helen from Wingard said, dear elected representative, I am horrified to read that the public are facing another threat to the clean energy supplement. Families are struggling with daily living costs. Every dollar counts. I urge you not to push people further back into poverty. You are ashamed. <laughs> Aileen from Somerset says, as a pensioner in Tasmania, it costs more than a pensioner can afford to keep the heater on from about 5 p.m. when it gets very cold until a sensible bedtime. Surely it's not expected that we put up with being cold. Most Aussies would not think this is fair. It's not. It's not. 
And then I'll go to Malcolm from Devonport. I am a pensioner. If these Liberal Mongols have their way, they'll try to get rid of their energy supplement, putting a heavier burden on the poor, and look after their rich mates in the coal industry. So we know the priorities of this government. It is not the pensioners. It is not the low-income and middle-income earners. It's the rich and big business. Yeah. Yeah.